good afternoon, everyone. It's such a great honor for me to be here. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, President Mrs. Sloan uh, for your kind invitation to share my personal testimony here and the respected administrators of HBU. And I appreciate Reverend Kale for being so gracious to give me his time slot today. Um, I'm only temporarily here in the United States. It's all so wonderful to have my dad, the original Dr. Tan here, so I'm very happy. And also I want to thank each of you uh, for just coming here. I know it's exam time. I'm not sure if you've started it or you will start it, but I, I do remember those times well, and I know it's not easy. Um, um, I've been praying for all of you that, that the Lord would use what I say today to help you in your life. Now, Reverend Kale mentioned my PhDs, but I'm also something else. I'm a PK. Do you know what a PK is? Teacher's kid, pastor's kid. So my, um, my dad is a pastor. My mom is a church minister. And I was really blessed to grow up in a truly devoted Christian family. Every morning, we woke up to seeing my parents have their quiet time with God, reading the Bible, singing, not always in tune, but singing, and, and praying sincerely to God. And that, as a child, it gave me a very deep impression. Actually, um, so this is our family when we moved from the Philippines to the United States. Actually, I'm a fifth-generation Christian because in the mid-1800s, uh, Christian missionaries came to China, and my ancestors heard the good news of Jesus Christ and believed. So we're um, one of the ancestors. They, they passed down an instruction to us that we should always be good to the missionaries because it's from them that we heard about Jesus Christ. You know, as a young girl, I made the most important decision of my life. And I decided to trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, just because I grew up in a Christian family, my dad, my parents are pastors, it doesn't mean I'm automatically going to heaven. But I knew I had, I had sinned, I had done wrong things. And I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he died on the cross. And when Christ died on the cross, he was actually taking the punishment for my sins. And he died in my place. He died so I didn't have to. And so when I was a young girl, I actually asked Jesus Christ to be my savior from sin. Now, some people have the wrong idea that once you become a Christian, your life is perfect. Have, have you sort of heard that, that idea? That's not true. It's not biblical. Well, here's a picture of me at the end of grade 10. It was an awards ceremony. Little did I know that shortly afterwards, my life will be radically changed. June 8, 1992, began as an ordinary day. My brother and I were excited to join a youth camp. This was a youth camp sponsored by the various Chinese churches in the Dallas area. There were several vans in that caravan bringing the youth to East Texas. So I closed my eyes to take a nap. And when I woke up, I was actually in the hospital, in an emergency room. What happened? Well, actually, um, on the way to youth camp, the van that my brother and I were traveling in was struck by a cement truck. That cement truck had actually filled up with cement, so it was very full. Coming down the hill um, hit my van, the van that we were in. And out of the 15 people in that car, my five of my friends were killed instantly. 10 of us, including my brother and me, we survived, but with injuries. So this incident was on national TV for several days. And as a young person, I was 16 years old. It was hard for me, physically and emotionally. And you know, we don't understand why God allows bad things to happen why he allows bad things to happen to good people. After all, we're, we're Christians going to a youth camp. Um, 
you know, but God is in control and I chose to trust him. Looking back, a blessing I learned, a blessing from that experience was that at a very young age, I learned how short and fragile life is. So four years later, when God's call came, I responded positively to his leading in my life. And I realized that each one of us, we only have one life to live, only one. And we needed to make it count, not just for what's temporary, but for what is eternal. Make it count for eternity. Now this afternoon, I'd like to share with you four scripture principles which have guided both my studies and my life. Now, um, all of you should have the handouts, so those will have the principles and the major scripture. And so um, the first is do your best in everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we read the verse from Colossians 3, 23, 24 together? And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Ask to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So here Colossians 3 is telling us whatever we do, well, that includes something as, as menial as washing the dishes for dinner, or as big as making important business decisions, and everything in between. Whatever we do includes our studies. And it says here, do it heartily. It's the idea of something genuine and from within, not just outwardly, superficially. Do your best. Put your heart into it. And do it as to the Lord and not just for men. Now, I know today we're living in a selfie age, and I take selfies as well. But what about when no camera's around? What if no one's watching? I would just encourage you always to do what is right, what is true, what is proper, and do it for God because he sees everything. He sees all the time. And look at the end of the verse. It says, someday we will receive a reward from God, an eternal reward. Maybe you feel you're trying your best, but many times you're unseen. You feel unseen by others. You feel unappreciated. But when you do things for God, God knows, and he will give us an eternal reward someday. Now, as a young person, I was challenged with the words of Colossians 3. And so I decided to apply this verse to my academic studies. So doing my homework, working on projects, preparing for tests, I tried to do my best, not for my parents, much as I love them, not for my teachers, much as I respected them, but for the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, the reality is I am not naturally smart. And let me tell you a true story. Now, I have two younger brothers, and as kids, my parents would bring us on day trips to these different places. So we were in the back row. In the middle was my baby brother strapped in the car seat. And my, um, my other brother and I were on either side of the car. And somehow on these car trips, I was always hot. What happened? Well, my very smart brother would determine the direction we're traveling and where the sun would be, so he would position himself in the shady spot. Does that sound like some of you? So around lunchtime, he would come up to me and be really sweet and nice and put his arm around me. My heart would melt. I thought, I have the best brother in the world. You want to change seats? Sure. Why is it always so hot here? <laughs> so... And I didn't figure out what was happening until years later. <laughs> so I'm not naturally smart, but so I must study extra hard. For example, some ideas and concepts which may take my classmates 10 minutes to understand, it would take me longer, like 15 or 20 minutes. You know, but that's okay. I was willing to put in that extra time, that extra effort for excellence because I'm doing it for Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes at school, I would see my classmates, you know, they would cheat a little. Before tests, they would copy answers from a friend's homework. During tests, they may just peek at a friend's test paper. As a young person, I didn't feel good about that. I thought that's not right. 
um, even though I was nice to all my classmates, I made a decision. No matter what grade I get, I would study the right way. I would study honestly, doing it by myself. Even if I get a lower grade, that's okay. But I still want high grades, right? So I had to work extra hard to put in more time to get it. The second principle I learned in my life is to seek God's guidance in every area of life and also in the future. Um, can you, let's read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 together. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So here the encouragement is to trust in God wholeheartedly in all areas of our life to acknowledge God, not just superficially recognize him, but a close, intimate relationship of God in every area of our life. And what is the promise here? Verse six, he shall direct thy paths. And the idea is of God removing obstacles and bringing us to the appointed goal. You know, as college students, I would just encourage you, you can seek God's guidance in your college studies. As a college student, um, the reality is I felt lost. Um, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I, I didn't know what was in the future. Other college students, I admired them. They, they walked with a purpose. That wasn't me. I, I'm not sure what my future should be. Um, perhaps some of you feel that way. But even though I felt that way, one thing I did know, the Lord, the God of the Bible, has the answers. And so what did I do? I still remember every semester, every semester from college to graduate school, before choosing classes, before I made any decision, I would have an extended time of prayer and Bible reading. I prayed a lot, sincerely asking God for his guidance and leading as I chose my classes, as I chose my major and minor. Now, what was the result? It wasn't a magic process. I didn't hear a voice from heaven saying, Christine, you have to major in MIS. That, that's not how it works. But as I prayed and read the Bible, the Lord used circumstances like what my parents, their input, um, what the academic advisors said, the university requirements. The Lord used all of these things to guide me in my choices. So I started off as a computer science major. I ended up double majoring in um, history and, and management information systems and minor in computer science. It was a step-by-step -step process. Now, um, it's, it's been almost 20 years later, so I'm showing my age. But looking back, what I majored and minored in was the ideal combination for me. Everything I studied, I can tell you, I'm using in my life and work today. And so when we acknowledge the Lord, he will guide us in all our ways. And so I would encourage all of you, you can seek God's guidance in your studies as well. God cares. But you know, you can also seek God's guidance for your life as well. Um, what, what does TGIF mean? Thank God it's Friday. I know many of you feel that way. It's Friday, right? No, wait, no, Thursday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow is Friday. And then sometimes people feel, oh no, it's Monday again. Here we go, another week. But let me ask you, can work be meaningful and fulfilling? Does God care what we do in life? Well, let's look at Ephesians 2 verse 10, and we can read it together. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Now we know that salvation, eternal life, is a free gift of God. Nothing we do, it's not of works. Salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ as Savior for our sins. So salvation is a free gift, not by works. But after salvation, after a person trusts in Jesus Christ as his or her Savior, God has things that he wants us to do. God has plans for each of our lives, and they're different. His plans for me are different than his plans for you. And so I believe that. And so 
my second or third year of college, I was 19 or 20 years at the time, I was specifically praying about this matter. What did God want me to do for the rest of my life? I was busy at school, I had work, but my future, what my future would be was a constant theme in my daily devotions and prayer for that year. You know, as I went about that year and prayed and read the Bible, God slowly put a burden in my heart. And that burden was that, for me, nothing less and nothing else than full-time ministry service to God would satisfy the desires of my heart. And so that year end, I was helping my dad lead a tour to the Holy Land. And it was on December 31st, after activities were all done, we were by the Sea of Galilee. And there I prayed with my dad and gave my life to God for full-time Christian ministry. Now, every person is different. For some of you, God may want you to serve him in vocational ministry, maybe as a Christian doctor, scientist, a Christian lawyer, a Christian educator, etc. The Lord leads all of us in different ways. And for me, it's been um, about 20 years since I made that decision as a college student. But I can honestly say I have no regrets at all. Life has its challenges. There's ups and downs, Christian ministry. But you know, there's a special peace, a joy, a satisfaction in your life that you can't explain that's priceless. Knowing that you're in the center of God's will, doing what God wants you to do, um, it's just priceless. And so I would encourage you, each of you, at, um, as a young person, you have your whole life ahead of you. Pray about your future. What does God want you to do? In Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So in my life, um, after graduating college, I entered Dallas Theological Seminary. I was so happy I got to study God's word, the Bible, which is something I love. So I was so excited. And I thought, this is my one and only chance to study the Bible, my only, one and only chance to be in seminary. I knew that God had something he wanted me to do. I didn't know exactly what it was yet, but whatever it was, I wanted to be fully prepared for it. And so I did something crazy something not usually done. Well, my crazy may be different from your crazy. <laughs> so, um, well, so what did I do? Now, you remember my Colossians 3, 23, 24 is my life verse, to do my best for Christ. And so I decided to do my best in seminary studies. And so um, I did something I don't think they had done before, which was to do five concentrations in my master's degree. Uh, Old and New Testament, Bible Exposition, Systematic Theology, Christian Education. I'm not saying this is for everybody. Everyone's different. Now, some people ask me, why did you do that? And the real answer is not to brag that, oh, I got five majors. But the real answer, my heart's desire, is to be fully equipped, fully prepared for the work that God would give me in the future, whatever it was. Now, throughout my college and graduate studies, I was working a lot in ministry on the side. Um, sometimes my work was so hard, I thought studies were easy. <laughs> but anyway, in the, mid in the middle of my master's studies, my dad asked if I could take off a semester to help in our PTPM ministry. And it was a time when our ministry really needed help. Now, the background of my life is throughout my life, I try to, I love my parents and try to honor them, which is biblical. So after praying about it, I did take off a semester to help our ministry. But you know what I found out? I find that when I do honor my parents, when I prioritize his kingdom ministry, God really makes it up. Afterwards, by God's grace, I was still able to graduate in the regular four years with five concentrations and a fraction of a point away from summa cum laude, but that's another story. <laughs> you know, the Lord, the Bible, God's word, is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. The Bible is our guide in life. 
And one thing I've learned um, through these years is that God unfolds his plan for us step by step. God doesn't always let us see too far in advance. So what I've learned is to simply focus on what God has given for us to do now. Do our best for Jesus now with what he has given us. And as we finish that, he will lead us to the next step. So as I neared completion of my master's studies, I was excited to return to the Philippines as a missionary. I was so tired of studying. I, I felt like this girl in this picture. How many of you feel this way now? <laughs> Probably most of us, right? I, I totally sympathize. And I thought, I am done with studying for the rest of my life. No, more. I don't want to look at another book. But God had other plans. The former president of Dallas Seminary, Dr. Donald Campbell, was a family friend. And one day on campus, he asked me, did I ever consider doctoral studies? I said, I, I, it came as a shock. No, no, that's not for me. I, I never thought of myself as a doctor. When I hear the words Dr. Tan, I think of my dad, the original one, who's known worldwide for his books. But, you know, during my last semester of master studies, the chairman of the Bible Exposition Department called me in to talk and said the department was inviting me to study for their PhD program. At first, I was not positive about it. Too much studies, I thought. But I prayed a lot about it and discussed with my parents. And so I started uh, the PhD program at Dallas Theological Seminary. So that's how I got into it. And so a year later, I got news that um, the University of North Texas had given me their highest fellowship to do their PhD program. And so after praying a lot about it and consulting with my parents, I did both at the same time. Now, if you, think, if you know anything about Chinese parents, um, you would think um, typical Chinese parents would not allow their daughters to study so much. And... Um, especially for a daughter, but my parents are not typical. When I mentioned the subject to my parents, my dad told me that doing these doctoral studies would equip me even more to do God's work in the future. And that was my real motivation, to prepare myself for his work. Now, some people will ask, how are you able to do all these studying? Um, you know, for some, um, sometimes you feel your brain is about to explode, right? But the answer is James 1, 5. James chapter 1, verse 5, and a lot of hard work. Um, so the third principle of my life is to ask for wisdom from God. You know Proverbs 2, verse 6, it says that the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So God is a source of all wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And there was a wonderful promise from James chapter 1, verse 5 that I found. Maybe we can read this together. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abrad it not, and it shall be given him. So this is a wonderful gem, a promise from the Bible, that when we don't have wisdom, we can ask from God. And when he asks, when we ask, God promises to give. And how does he give? God gives generously. He doesn't give, you know, sting, stingily, is that a word? He doesn't give miserly, you know, a speck of wisdom here and there. He gives generously. And he also doesn't scold. He doesn't say, Christine, you're so foolish. Uh, coming to me again with this request. But God gives generously. And he gives, he doesn't scold. Now, this Bible promise I love so much that I printed James 1.5 on a piece of paper and I put it on my study, um, my bedroom at home where I study and also in um, the doctoral carol at school. And we had these little cubicles at the library where we studied in. So I put that verse in front of me, James 1.5, if we lack wisdom, we can ask from God. And many times when I was stuck on a hard school assignment, I would look up and be reminded, ask for wisdom from God. Now, what about the realities of life? Challenges, stresses, setbacks, um, those, those come to everyone, and I've experienced a lot too. But don't allow these to drive you away from God. Let these bring you closer to God 
dependence on him. So the fourth principle, <laughs> this is sometimes we feel that we're so stressed in life and the nurse is saying, I'm afraid you failed your stress test. And the cartoon character says, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt that way sometimes. But one thing I've learned is in all circumstances of life, just to trust in him, simply trust in God. Let's read Psalm 62, 8 together. Trust in him at all times. You people pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. So at all times in life, whether you're confused, you're happy, you're sad, you're troubled, trust in God. And I don't know about you, but sometimes my heart feels so full, and whether it's frustrations or difficulties, and you just need to talk to someone, but there's really no one you can talk with. But you know, here it says that our God welcomes us to pour our heart to him. And God promises to be our refuge. He promises to be our shelter from danger. Now, what happened to me? I was about to defend my second dissertation, PhD, and suddenly I got a call from my mom in the Philippines. This was in 2010. Dad had had a sudden heart attack. His main arteries were blocked, and the last artery was almost fully blocked. He needed surgery right away. Um, if he had just a smaller heart attack, it, it would be no more. Now, my dad, if you know anything about him, he's always thinking about the ministry. So he was worried that who, he was about to lead a journey, a footsteps of Paul tour to Greece, Turkey, and Italy in a couple of weeks. And my mom told me it would relieve Papa's mind if I could lead it along with my brother. Because these many years, I had been helping him lead these tours. And so, of course, I told my mom, don't worry, tell, tell Papa, don't worry, I will help lead it with my brother. Now, Dad's heart attack came as a total shock. Um, sometimes troubles in life come that way. And I was emotional and tearful. And in a shock, I remember just praying to God in my room, just, just committing it all to the Lord, telling him about all these things. And my life was about to change, and very quickly, but God is in control. So within a day, I had to return to go back to the Philippines, I, just basically throwing all my clothes into the luggage, and that's it, and, and quickly go, go to the Philippines to be with him in his heart attack, his surgery. Now, Philippines is a third world country. They didn't have the best technology. Um, and my dad had many potential complications. But a lot of people were praying. And by God's grace, the surgery was very successful. And soon after the surgery, my brother and I led the tour to Europe and then came back. By God's grace, it was very successful. They were happy. Then afterwards, uh, pretty soon, I had to go back to Dallas and defend my dissertation, <laughs> um, jet lag and all. But, but praise God, I, I got through it somehow. And then my, my dad called me on the phone. There was a problem. His surgery was successful, but he needed to undergo heart, heart rehab. And the hospital there, even though it was the top there, um, it was not adequate for his needs. The United States level of care was still the best. And so if, if they waited any few weeks longer, um, the heart condition, the limitations there would be permanent. But my dad was worried because he had some church work and he wanted to maintain the standards of quality. So he asked if we could switch places. So you can guess my answer. Yes. Yes, Papa, I'll help you. So I, I came back to the Philippines and he went to the States for rehab. And so a year later, I returned back to the U.S. To, to walk my second Ph.D. graduation. I don't think I've ever traveled so much in such a short time. But you know, the entire period, I was totally and utterly dependent on God. My trust was in God. I poured out my problems, my difficulties to the Lord, and He was my refuge. Now, finishing both Ph.D. programs was not easy. Um, I was involved in work in ministry, and aside from the problems and setbacks I mentioned, there were others. Um, 
And so at the end, I wanted to acknowledge the one who carried me throughout the whole process, the one who deserves all the credit for all these accomplishments. So what did I do? For both my dissertations, the one, the PhD in Dallas Seminary, as well as the one in University of North Texas, on the acknowledgments page of both, both dissertations, um, I wrote something at the top, and I didn't care that UNT was a secular school. Um, I wrote, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I give all glory, honor, and praise. And then I put a verse there. Because God is the reason I was able to get those doctorates, and I wanted to let the world know. Now, I'm not perfect. My life is not perfect. I failed, and I've done things wrong. But the wonderful thing for us as Christians is that we can always confess our sins to God. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in conclusion, I'd like to challenge you. Number one, do your best in everything for the Lord Jesus. Number two, seek God's guidance in everything, in your studies, in your future. Number three, you can ask God for wisdom. And number four, trust God in all circumstances of life. These four principles have helped me in my academics and also life in, in general. And I want to close with the phrase again, one life to live make it count for eternity. Um, I know the time is short, and at first I was going to teach you a song, but maybe I'll just sing it for you one stanza. There's a beautiful song called Our Best. Um, I'll just sing one stanza, and we'll close. Hear ye the master's call, give me thy best. For be it great or small, that is his test. Do then the best you can, not for reward, not for the praise of men, but for the Lord. Every work for Jesus will be blessed, but he, us from every one, is best. Our talents may be few, these may be small, but unto him is due our best, our all. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you.